We've all seen television pictures of the devastation in Somalia, but you can't really grasp the enormity of the problems until you actually go there. What I found in many ways defies description. In that country where bullets are more plentiful than bread, thousands are still dying of starvation every day. Somalia is at war with itself, and armed gangs control the streets. But where once there was despair, now there's hope. International aid is pouring in by the plane load to help feed hundreds of thousands of refugees. The real tasks, however, are to maintain those food and medical supplies and to make sure they all get through to the people who need them most. These Somali refugees are among the lucky ones. They've got a place to stay in this deserted Saudi Arabian embassy and they get some food. Their guardian angel is Madame Nurta. She told me that young Somali boys no longer go to school and follow Islam. She says their new god is the Kalashnikov automatic rifle. We are rich in arms, but we are very, very poor by food, by everything, every means. We don't have schools, we don't have teachers. We were killed most of them in the fighting. We have just guns in our country. We don't have anything else. Madame Nurto is right. Somalia is rich in guns. As soon as you land in the place, you have to deal with a gunman. Mogadishu was the capital of Somalia, but right now, it's simply a collection of armed camps and aid centres. We're on our way to see the man who controls North Mogadishu, Ali Mahdi. It's not a big area, and it's not in great shape, but it's enough for Ali Mahdi to call himself the interim president of Somalia. President Mahdi has his own private army, but he won't say how big it is. I, will, I don't want to say the figure, no. but I'm sure I'm enough, I have enough forces to control anywhere that I want. Mahdi's opposition is this man, General Muhammad Aideed. The general now calls himself Chairman Aideed, head of the United Somali Congress. Chairman Aideed's current headquarters are in Badira, in the southwest of the country. His troops look like extras from a Mad Max movie but the Chairman General claims a large constituency. We are controlling now 11 regions yeah. out of 18, uh, consisting of more than two thirds of the country as a territory yeah. and as a population. The fact is that right now, neither have the power to get rid of the gangs who control Mogadishu and much of the country. These young men control the markets, the streets, the distribution of aid. They control life and death in Somalia for a price. They're called technicals. And if you want to move about in the daytime or sleep reasonably safely at night, you pay the technicals. And if you want to feed the hungry, well, you pay the technicals again. World Vision's Jacob Ackhol knows that aid is being ripped off by the gunmen from the various clans or gangs. But he still says we have to keep the food coming. If all the aid that came in here went to the stomachs of those who are actually starving, we could, we could save so many people. Uh, but we accept that a lot of food goes into the hands of the merchants who have hired the gunmen and so on. Nevertheless, uh, in spite of that, if none of the food came into Somalia, we could have millions dying, not just uh, hundreds or thousands we are talking about now. Jake, we're sitting here in a compound with World Vision people surrounded by armed guards. What do you make of that? In Somalia, there is no way out. The only way out is stay away. Don't come to Somalia at all. Once you are in here, everybody has got to have guards, uh, whether you like it or not. The guards will have to take you everywhere you are going to. 
guns are part of the currency of aid. Yes, there is no way in Somalia. I have not seen anything like that in any part of Africa before. The aid has to keep coming for these people. Somalis are dying in their thousands each day. Those who can make it are trekking to feeding centres like this one in Ali Mahdi's territory, North Mogadishu. This lady has ten children, her yeah. husband's died, yeah. and she has only eaten once in 24 hours. Yes, and they have no, this is all the covering they have. Yes. No, nothing to stop the cold at night. Yeah. When I first came here, none of these um, people were here at all. This was completely derelict. This building used to be the, um, the marine headquarters for the Maybe. Somali government. Yeah. And Alistair Dawson is the United Nations man in North Mogadishu. He's a Kenyan. He used to run a five-star hotel in Kenya, and he owns a pub in Portugal's fashionable Algarve. His clientele is a little different these days, but Alistair still gives them every care and attention. This feeding centre has been going for six weeks. Can you see the difference in that in that time in the kids? Oh, a tremendous difference. Um, three months ago, when the people first started coming in, a tremendous number of children died simply through measles, let alone malnutrition. This is what everybody wants to see. Aid working. Red Cross, Red Crescent, UNICEF, World Vision, CARE, all the agencies just want to get the job done. But it's hard when the country is in a state of armed chaos, with Ali Mahdi and General ID at each other's throats and the gangs at war with everyone. As you know, in our country, there is no any police, there is no any military. Mahdi wants the UN to take over and establish control. So my government, they always ask it for one year to the UN to bring this country to a peacekeeping forces to bring back a peace and distribute the food. This is what a UN force would have to handle. We're crossing the ceasefire line between North and South Mogadishu. I change cars and there is also a changing of the guard, a new lot of technicals. We've hired this gang from a different clan. We're told later that in this area and about this time, 54 people were taken off a bus and shot just because they belonged to the wrong clan. Despite this anarchy, General ID doesn't want any more UN troops, especially if Ali Mahdi has asked for them. He feels 500 is more than enough if they work with his 6,000 police. Our police are very much, you know, well trained. Uh, 6,000 of police, of Somali police, national police are available. They need only uniform and some equipment, uh, ra like radio, transport minis, and other things. Ali Mahdi has a different solution, but it also needs money. We need to disarm all these people, and to do this, we need help from outside. We should have the, the capability or the possibility to buy from them uh, uh, the armies. Somalia may well deserve better leaders than Ali Mahdi and Chairman Ideed, but they represent the two main factions in the country, and until they talk, there is no hope of an internal solution to Somalia's problems. And this is Somalia's problem, and ours. I talked to them about this, and at first it didn't look good. I did said the interim president was a criminal imposter. We have already uh, appointed a prosecutor to investigate these crimes, and uh, they will be the front of a court. Uh, a free uh, and fair, you know, treatment. Ali Mahdi went for the moral high ground. The, the real Somali man, the real leader Somali, 
should think only how to come, how to bring the Somali together, how to bring peace for this country, how to feed these people who are dying daily, and power will come later. First of all, they have to uh, declare openly that they are not uh, government. Ali Mahdi told me it might be possible. Yes, I'm ready. I will cooperate in any way or any proposal who will bring peace in this country. If he did that and officially announced it to the Somali people, to the world, mm -hmm. we will examine and we will be prepared to uh, uh, consult uh, with also other parties and consider their views and then uh, we will be flexible. As I said, Somalia may well deserve better than Ali Mahdi and I did. It certainly deserves better than these gunmen. We've got to keep the food coming for these people. They've walked hundreds of kilometres over the desert to save their children and themselves. If they don't get the aid, then there's just this. It doesn't have to be like this. It can be like this. And until the Somali faction sit down to talk, until the gangs are disarmed, and until the United Nations establishes some control, we have to keep the food and medicine coming. The Alistair Dawsons of this world will do the rest. When we first started here, some of the kids could hardly stand, hardly walk. Um, tremendous, tremendously malnourished. And now you can see the difference. Like any other kids, noisy, rowdy, um, yeah. still enjoying their, their daily food that we offer them. Makes it worthwhile. It gives a, a nice feeling inside your heart, yes, it does. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.